A look at the iPhone 11 in the flesh, Apple's AR headset on the chopping block, and the hundreds of new emojis coming to your iPhone keyboard. Let's get right to the core of this week's Apple News and Rumors. As we inch closer and closer to Apple's next launch event, we're getting even more realistic renders for the next batch of iPhones. This week, Lewis Hilsentegger, aka Unbox Therapy, got his hands on what he claims is a more accurate representation of what that iPhone 11 would look like. And sure enough, it may not be a working model, but it looks a lot more realistic than those 3D mock-ups that we'd seen floating around before. Most of the stuff he points out, we kind of already knew based on the rumors. So same general form factor as the previous models, that three camera array on the back that is even larger than we thought, same screen size and notch. A few interesting standouts from this video, that camera module lies almost flush against the back of the phone. Compare this to the current iPhone XS camera module, which sticks out a lot more and kind of jiggles a little bit more when you place it against a flat surface. Now, even though the camera module is a lot bigger, obviously, the fact that it doesn't stick out as much is a definite plus for me. Next, he shows the new circular mute switch on the side of the phone, which slides up and down. And this is in line with the rumors we had already seen, but now we're seeing it in the flesh. And he also mentions slightly larger Face ID modules on the front, which could signal a better, faster Face ID on the next iPhone. Now, whether or not this particular render turns out to be accurate is TBD, but we won't have to wait too long to find out. And even though we don't have official dates yet, my guess is we will find out on September 10th. Don't quote me. But if you don't like this iPhone, there's always next year. We've continued to get even more rumors about the 2020 iPhone, which this early in the game seems really, really strange. Last week, we talked about some of the rumored new features like 5G connectivity, in-screen touch ID, new screen sizes, and a 3D sensing camera module, which would make this iPhone worth the wait. And since I last saw you guys, which wasn't that long ago, we're hearing that Apple may not just shrink the notch, but get rid of it altogether either in 2020 or in 2021, because it may have found a way to hide the Face ID modules behind the screen or it could be switching to an in-screen Touch ID system as suggested in this recent China Times report. Either way, the idea of a truly edge-to-edge -edge display with no notch interruptions is enough to make me wanna wait for 2020. Also this week, more news to back up rumors about a 3D sensing camera module on the back of the phone. According to a report in DigiTimes cited in Mac rumors, Apple has already asked its manufacturing partner who produces these components to have those sensors ready for next year. The technology would be similar to that of the Face ID setup on the front of the phone, except this setup would be even more powerful, capable of scanning objects from 15 feet away. Compare that to the max of 50 centimeters needed for a Face ID scan to work. At this point, it's unclear why you wouldn't just wait to the 2020 iPhone. And that was my question for you guys last week. What one feature would convince you to buy this year's iPhone 11? And it seemed like a lot of you wanted the return of Touch ID. Ahmad says he would switch back to the iPhone if Apple introduces in-display fingerprint and a 5X zoom. John Lamphere says that he would revert back to the fingerprint sensor and better battery life. Face ID is awesome, but I prefer fingerprint, he says. And it seems like battery life was another popular one that would tempt you into buying this year's iPhone 11, along with a smaller notch. Uncle Jerry 50th says a noticeably smaller notch would make me upgrade to the 2019 iPhone. Although after hearing about a notchless iPhone in 2020, I'm thinking it's not gonna happen this year. Also, another reason you may want to upgrade this year, not next year, is that if you don't live in the US, 5G is probably not going to be a huge deal because it won't be rolling out until much later for other countries. The other Apple product slated to make its big debut in 2020 was its AR VR headset. And now we're not so sure. 
Multiple sources, including longtime Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo and CNET's own Shara Tibkin, had reported that Apple was developing a mixed reality headset, augmented and virtual, with an 8K display for each eye to launch as early as next year. And all signs pointed to yes, Tim Cook had been a vocal believer in AR and had led Apple in a series of AR-related acquisitions over the last three years. Not to mention the company has already poured a lot into its mobile AR platform, ARKit. And now that new 3D mapping camera module on the 2020 iPhone was the icing on the cake. But a recent report in Digitime states that Apple has had to abandon the project and dismantle the team. This because apparently the hardware behind the glasses was nowhere near completion and that Apple was not able to reach a price point that consumers would actually purchase. Now take this with a grain of salt though because Digitimes hasn't exactly had a pristine track record of this type of news, but it might explain the departure of Apple's AR Glasses team lead, Avi Barzeev, earlier this year. He was one of the key people behind Microsoft's HoloLens and probably someone you wanted on the team. Now hopefully this doesn't mean that the project is scrapped completely and maybe we're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer because I personally was really excited to see new hardware from Apple and to see Apple's take on an AR headset. In happier news, this week was World Emoji Day. Yes, this is what we've come to as a civilization. We now have a World Emoji Day. And to celebrate, Apple released a preview of the tons of new emojis coming to your iPhone with the update to iOS 13 in September. Now, some notable additions include better representation of people with disabilities, mixed race and same gender couples, and some pretty essential members of the animal kingdom, like the sloth, the flamingo, the skunk, ooh, waffles and falafels, and my own spirit emoji. <sighs> the yawning face. Seriously, I don't know how we survived without this one. According to a trend report released by Adobe this week, these are the top emojis. And honestly, I'm pleasantly surprised because I thought it might have been this one. Sadly though, we've come to depend way too much on emojis to express our emotions because according to the report, 65% of people prefer to send an emoji than to have an actual conversation about how they are feeling. I guess I don't blame them. On the plus side though, it has said to break the language barrier, which is definitely a plus. Now, 73% of people though say there aren't enough emojis and they wish they had more emoji customization to better reflect their personal appearance and identity. So you can bet there's more coming. That's it for this week's show, but I wanna know what emoji that currently does not exist would you most like to see on your iPhone keyboard? Leave your answers on the comment section below, tweet me, you know the drill. And in the meantime,